Hello and welcome to another photography video. Uh, today is macro photography. I'm at a brand new site, literally just found this site yesterday. Uh, I've got my Canon 1DX, I've got my Canon 100mm f2.8 macro lens, the older version. I've also got a tripod with me as well. I'm going to be looking for any flowers, hopefully some insects as well, and I'm going to give you some tips and techniques along the way. Just down here I've found a nice group of common spotted orchids looking in really good condition right next to the path so I'm going to have a look at this. So I've had a look around these orchids, the difficulty is, I mean they're right, they're right next to the path which is fantastic, it means I don't have to go in and disturb anything, potentially destroy any plants which I definitely don't want to do. Um, I've had a look round and there's no real clear background. This is one of the problems you're going to get. There's, whichever direction I shoot around these orchids, there is really no, no clear background. So instead of doing that shot kind of from the side, because I don't think the background's going to be fantastic, I'm going to shoot pretty much from above. I'm going to try and shoot almost directly from above, I think. Try and go for a real macro shot, concentrate on those leaves and the colours. So with the 100mm macro lens, should be able to get in pretty close. I'm going to have a look handheld first decide on the composition that I really want. Uh, I'm not dressed for this. Yeah, I like this angle. I think I'm going to go for this as I kind of, I'm going to shoot it in a diagonal plane. So rather than be above one of the orchids or to the side, I'm going to shoot from a diagonal point of view and hopefully I'll be able to get at least some of both those two orchids in sharp focus together. I think that's going to work quite well with the shallow depth of field. So I'm just going to take a test shot. This is just, doesn't have to be perfect, just a general test shot. Okay, that gives me an idea. <laughs> I uh, managed to find a composition that I am fairly happy with. It's not perfect by any means. So what I've got, none of the angles seem to really work for me, except this one. So the two I'm concentrating on, we've got one lower down and one at the top. And what I've done is kind of position the camera, it's at an angle, it's almost kind of like diagonal to the orchids. So what that means is, because one's higher up and one's lower down, at that angle I should get a similar depth of field in both the orchids. So if I just shot from directly above, I'd get the top one in focus. If I shot from lower down, I'd get the bottom one more in focus because it would be closer. But if I use this angle, it's sort of along the plane of the two orchids, then I can use this fairly shallow depth of field and I can get part of both orchids in nice sharp focus. Hope that makes sense. Got it on the tripod and on live view and then I'm going to focus on live view what I do is zoom in to times five and then just tweak the focus manually try and be as accurate as I can so where do we focus that's always a difficult one what I've tried to do I'm focusing really primarily on the back orchid I think that's the more important one and I'm choosing an area I'm, I'm choosing specific petals of the orchid to focus on to make sure that they're nice and sharp uh, but also I'm trying to make that coincide with petals on the foreground orchid so that I've got two focus points on both orchids that are nice and sharp. I'm shooting at f4.5 so I've chosen a wide aperture mostly just to throw the background out but I'm really happy with the result that's given me so I've not changed the aperture at all very very happy with that uh, shooting anything between ISO 200 and ISO 400 so if the breeze is getting up just a little bit then I'm shooting at ISO 400 to give me a faster shutter speed and if it looks really still I'm going down to, to 200 and um, still going to get good quality out of that on the 1DX I have played around with the positioning, so I've played around a little bit, and with macro photography, that only means a few inches, you know, a few inches can matter. So, just going slightly closer and varying the compositions, I've taken a few shots where I've just changed the focus a bit, and I've also taken one where I've focused on the foreground orchid as opposed to the background one. Kind of got a bit of a diagonal, I've got the orchid now 
top left and the one that's closer bottom right i've also got that out of focus color from another background orchid which is adding to it So always nice to get a bit of variation whilst you're out in the field and then afterwards you can review the images and decide which one you prefer. Occasionally the sun is trying to break through, it's just pushing through the cloud and there's actually a gap, there's kind of a gap up there between two trees and when the cloud's gone the sun is actually poking through there and it's now starting to shine down onto the orchids. Um, that's not ideal for me, I'd rather shoot in overcast conditions, however I am a bit of a I'm a bit of a stick in the mud sometimes. I need to be a bit more flexible. Um, so when the sun did shine, it was kind of coming through slightly side lit, slide, side lit, back lit. Uh, it was actually looking quite nice. Insect on me here. Um, that's good, there's insects around. Moths as well. Anyway, what was I saying? Side light. Yeah, so it's just a little bit of light which is actually coming through, like uh, coming through the back from up here onto the orchids. And it's actually looking quite nice because it's not too bright. The, the sunlight, I don't really like using bright sunlight for, for flower photography, uh, but if you just get a little bit and it's soft enough, then it can be really quite nice. So when that's happened, I took a couple of shots as the, uh, as the sun was shining through onto the orchids and I just adjusted the exposure. I can see straight away, um, Playing the image back, I could see that the highlights are flashing, the highlights are blown out. So I've just increased the shutter speed just to underexpose the image a little more. The brightest parts of the image, right at the end of the histogram, I've deliberately allowed them to blow out. That's kind of a technique that I use now which I didn't used to, but if it's if it's just that bit at the end, I tend to let it blow out and then shoot it on raw. I know usually uh, that information is still there in the final image anyway. Uh, I chose today because the winds were forecast to be really low, like two, three, four miles an hour, which is absolutely perfect. But also in this new location, I've got this really big tree line here, it's quite big trees. So that's giving me extra shelter as well. So photographing down here, photographing plants and flowers, on the ground. I'm also getting extra shelter from these trees, which is fantastic. Right, I'm done with the orchids for now. I have just found something I think is gonna look absolutely incredible. Uh, it's just, it's so simple. It's a umbellifer. Uh, with loads of these umbellifers here, like, uh, I think it's hogweed. It's fairly big. Um, this is gonna make an amazing picture. Just this here, this top umbellifer head, it's, there's a few different ones around here. Some are white, uh, some are still coming out, so they're kind of a uh, oh, bit of a reddish purple colour. This one here is a mixture. It's a mixture of white and red, and also it's just got an amazing flat plane of focus. It is almost completely flat. I'm going to be able to get almost full depth of field across there without even worrying too much about the aperture. So uh, again, I'm going to take a test shot, then get the tripod. I really got quite excited about this. I don't mind admitting it. It is just, this is one of the most beautiful things I photographed in a long time, I think. Um, so we've got this umbellifer head. I, I find these very photogenic anyway, just in general. Um, but the difficulty is getting that sort of flat plane of focus so that you get as much of it in sharp focus as possible. And this one is just so flat, it's incredible. So again, I've got the camera, I've tried to get the camera directly above on that plane of focus. It's slightly kind of angled this way, which is, as you can see from the camera, I'm just shooting directly down into it. Um, and below it, you can see all the little stems sprouting out like, a, I don't like the spines of an umbrella. And also I've, I've adjusted it very slightly. I'm trying to get maximum depth of field, but I've adjusted it very, very slightly to get some background flowers. There is some buttercups at the bottom uh, of this plant. So just by adjusting the tripod very slightly, I've managed to bring that colour into the shot as well. So it was already good as it was, but I've managed to make it, I think, even better by just bringing in some of the bright yellow in the background. So I am on, what am I on? Shooting at ISO 400, again, F4.5. I'm just happy with the depth of field and the background and I've got a shutter speed of two hundredth of a second. You'll notice as well that I've changed to the remote release. Now I'd actually advise 
for macro photography I would advise using a remote release rather than a two second timer. The reason being if you're getting that slight movement in the breeze as you so often do if you wait two seconds that two seconds can make a difference in the movement. If you use your remote release then you're taking the shot at the exact time when the movement is at a minimum. So um, I'm going to put it on live view. Yeah, it's on live view, which is basically putting the mirror up so I get less camera shake. And that's it. Oh my word, that is just fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. It's so simple, it's just using a natural pattern and a mixture of colours, just sort of radiating pattern, I absolutely love it. If you want to see more photography tutorials from me, then do click the playlist up here. If you want to see more vlogs out in the field, like this might be one, I'm not too sure yet, then click the playlist up here. If you're not subscribed, please do, please do click the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thanks for watching, I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon.